Hey Dan. Hey thank Mel. <laughs> thank you so much for joining me today. Um, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I really wanted you on and I, I tapped you up earlier in the year, but you were off on your travels. So um, we're now in November and I've managed to get you on. So that's brilliant. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. And thank you for having me. It's a, it's a pleasure and an honour to be here. <laughs> thank you. Um, so just a little bit about Dan. I met Dan um, probably getting on for three years ago in London at a get together. And um, as per some of my previous podcasts, me and Dan are both in SFM, which is Six Figure Mentors. And that's an organization that helps people change their life in terms of looking for alternatives. So I met Dan back in London. Um, we were all having a get together and a few drinks. And I knew about Dan um, already. I knew that he was doing well in SFM. So everybody wanted to get a bit of Dan to um, find out what the secret was and all that kind of thing. And, um, and then since then, since, you know, over the last few, and actually it was Dan that sort of inspired me to go all in with SFM, to be fair. Mm -hmm. um, and then since then, you know, we've crossed paths uh, in various ways. We both jumped out of a plane for Victoria's Promise. Um, we went to Edinburgh last year, didn't we? And went to see Joe Dispenza for a weekend. Yeah. And I've watched, I've watched in awe, um, with Dan's progress over the last three years. Oh yeah, and we were in the Dominican Republic together as well, weren't we? Oh yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, and um, yeah, so I've just watched in awe at Dan, how he's flourished and started from the affiliate and, and moved into other things. So I'm not gonna talk too much about Dan's story because I want him to. So that's how I know Dan. And Dan, if you could um, just let the listeners know you know where you came from and where you are now I think that would be a huge huge inspiration for them awesome thank you Mel lovely introduction I really appreciate that and uh, yeah all those times that we've kind of met up and done the skydiving and Dominican Republic is you know really good memory so uh, nice reminder um yeah so as Mel said I came from a background in um I was actually in the corporate world in software sales and started my first business as an affiliate company in September 2016. Um, that was through SFM, so going through their education and learning how to essentially build a business online that could replace my income and, and allow me to do the freedom and the travel and all that kind of fun stuff that I wanted to, to do and get out my system at some point in my life. So, so is that what drove you to do that, to get out of the corporate job? Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd love to say that I, I, you know, had a passion that I wanted to pursue and like a grand vision for the future and this impact that I wanted to make in the world. Um, I'd love to say that that's how I started. But quite honestly, it was just being unfulfilled and unhappy in the corporate world um, and just wanting to change and wanting to be in control of my own life and not have a boss, you know, dictate um, what I was worth and, and have to trade all of my time uh, for money for a boss. So. Yeah, it was just wanting to change, knowing that I wasn't happy where I was and looking for alternative paths um, to go down. And online business just seemed like the most obvious way for me to go back then. Cool. So sorry, I interrupted you. You were ready uh, for SFM. <laughs> yeah, so, so I started SFM uh, September 2016. Within the first 12 months, had kind of achieved the first goal that I had, which was completely replace income. Um, quit job and, and start traveling and I did the 15 months of world traveling in mostly across 2018 tail end of 2017 2018 and that was really good fun like I enjoyed the adventure I enjoyed the freedom I got rid of my flat that I had in Portsmouth got rid of that sold my car and literally everything that I owned was in a suitcase um, and, and it was suitcase laptop airport world <laughs> and, and that was you know incredibly liberating but I kind of reached a point or started reaching a point towards the end of 2018 where I'd be in these incredible places and everything would almost start feeling quite like, like a bit empty, you know? And I remember this time I was in Halong Bay in Vietnam, which is just it's one of the most beautiful places on planet earth. It's, oh, wow. it's phenomenal. There's like these, they're almost these upside down mountains, like greenery down the side of them, crystal blue water. And there was a whole load of us that were, um, we, we were kayaking through Halong Bay, like incredible place. Yeah. And I remember catching myself almost feeling 
I don't know if bored is the right word, but but just it was just like you know another day in paradise. And, and I remember thinking like, oh my god, like how how dare I <laughs> be feeling massively appreciative of what I'm doing right now? And it got to the point where the the travel and like these awesome adventures had kind of become the, the norm, and that was the new baseline. And the thing I related to Mel is like you know when you get a promotion or get a new job that you've really wanted or something like that. And when you first get it, it's like, you're so excited. And then within 12 to 24 months, it's kind of like another Monday morning and then it's TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. And it was that same kind of feeling. And I was like, wow, you know, this, this really goes to show that your current reality, like your current life, if you stay in the same place um, and you're not approaching it with this constant gratitude and, and, you know, reminding yourself of, of all the good things that we have and where we're at, like it will just become your new norm, your new baseline. So that for me was a really a second um, kickstart to, to start focusing on what is the bigger impact that I want to have? Like what is the, the deeper um, level, like the meaning and everything that I want to begin focusing on in my life. And, and that's kind of been, really what set the scenes for the last two years um to to where we are now coming into the end of 2020 so yeah it's been it's been an awesome journey did the traveling thing that was great um and what what really i think sfm and starting my first business has enabled me to do is over the last two years it's enabled me the space to really put a lot of focus into working on myself and then also could really put a lot of focus into um, thinking about and answering some of these bigger questions like what is the legacy I want to leave behind you know what do I want to have achieved by the time I get to the end of my life and you just don't get the space to really dig into those things if you are say trapped in the corporate world for example so it's kind of a, a little bit of an overview of the last four years so so when you got to that point where you were like oh god it's another day in paradise mm. um, and then you realized that you needed more you wanted more what what happened next? What what was it that you thought you missing? Yeah, so it was a realization. Well, I say realization, but I think we will kind of have like these chapters in our life where we know something, but then we know it to another level when something happens. And and the thing that I realized then was that if I'm, you know, feeling about this now and the, the answer can never be to want more like because the as far as i was concerned there's like there isn't really more <laughs> like you know this is this, this is it like this is life and at the end of 2018 and going into 2019 it really brought me face to face with myself because i'd, I'd kind of throughout my life always seen myself as quite successful and i've had some really dark times and you know periods where i was definitely not that but I'd always really seen myself deep down as someone who was successful and I'd have ambition and I'd have big goals and I'd, you know, had a, a successful career. And in, I, I'd always kind of had this thing of like, oh, when, when I get to this next level, things will be in some way different. Um, for example, I told myself when I started my first business that, oh, you know, in the corporate world, um, so let me let me just backtrack in the corporate world i'd always i'd always kind of had this thing of knowing that another income goal was not going to change anything like i knew that just if i earn more money it doesn't mean that everything's going to suddenly change and blah 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 like i knew that and yet i think deep down i was telling myself that oh when i do the travel thing and the freedom thing and i've got my own business like that will be awesome and it was yeah. but then i had this again this realization of well it doesn't matter how incredible your environment is or or how um you know what what it is you've created in terms of material results in your life you're always going to get to that same space of of in brackets wanting more um if you're telling yourself that the solution to you know happiness or fulfillment or whatever is in that material stuff because it's not and and so i suppose what i'm trying to say is like the end of 2018 bringing me face to face with myself was was almost this feeling of like, well, there's nothing more. And yet I'm feeling a certain way now. So what's going on? And I, it kind of brought me inwards and, and started, uh, you know, 2019 was a real journey of self-reflection and personal development and a lot of deep work. Um, 
and, and that was because I kind of reached the, the, the top of what I was trying to achieve in terms of material goals. Uh, this is kind of a convoluted way of try, <laughs> trying to say that, um, you know, I think the answer to everything is not necessarily in the material, but achieving the material is what gives us the space to then explore these other aspects of ourselves. Yeah, and I think that's that's really it's a really important thing. It wasn't convoluted at all, by the way. It's a really important thing to say because so many people are chasing the dream, chasing mm. the chasing the big house, chasing the car, chasing maybe the girlfriend or whatever. And you're looking outside of yourself for that um satisfaction, that contentment. And you know, I've done it myself as well. Um but I, I know that you would, you started on your self, well, really started properly last year on your self development because you were one of the reasons I did Landmark, and yeah. um, that's you know that's a, that's an eye opener when you do Landmark. It, Landmark is a self development program, and um, it very much is you know about um, well, God, you may as well just throw away every construct you've ever thought really in terms of all the stories we build about around our own experiences and the meanings that we put to it which is all self-made, um, isn't it? It's just an event that happened 10 years ago and, it, and I've built everything else around it. Um, yeah. And it's the same with the material stuff. We think, you know, I always remember Stu and Jay, um, especially Stuart talking about, you know, um, people that he knows that, are, that are, have got money, but they're miserable. Mm. And, and also Guy and Alain, they say the same thing. They see people that have got a lot of money and they're miserable. Yeah. Because they've made, it's a bit like you, you know, you thought traveling around the world was going to be the pinnacle. That's what you were after. And, and by the way, that's what I wanted as well. Mm. Um, and you got there and you bloody enjoyed it. But then you realize, oh, actually, no. So, so when you embarked on the, the going inward and the self-development, before and after, I suppose, before you got into it, what did you think you needed to achieve? And how have you, what's the journey been like to where we are today? Yeah, so at the start of 2019, it was almost like I, I didn't know what the answer was. And there was this sense of, um, I'm, I'm not, I wouldn't go as far as saying panic or desperation, but it was kind of like, when I was in the corporate world and, and chasing the dream, I always had that as a fallback of like, I might not be happy right now, but at least when I get there, that's when things will be different. And I'd have like the drive to work towards that. And when I suddenly realized that that was never the answer, now I had nothing. <laughs> I was like, well, now what do I do? <laughs> that was kind of what started this, you know, the, the journey in 2019. And I, I think one of the most powerful realizations that I've um, got to over the last two years is that, the times in my life when I've been happiest and most fulfilled and like, you know, on fire to that point where you wake up in the morning and like you're jumping out of bed because you can't wait to focus on what you're focusing on. And like, you've just got so much energy um, every day because of, you know, what you're working on. And, and the times that I've been in that space are not when I have achieved the goal. It's when I've been working on what it is that I want to work on, whatever that may be. So I kind of realized that, the end goal is not important and it sounds really cliche like the end goal is not important it's about the journey but I really got that it's like it, it is <laughs> you know so the space that I'm in now um we've kind of in, in across the businesses we've been focusing on um what is again the larger impact the mission the vision etc that we that we want to create in the world but actually really yes that stuff is important but what's more important is that we're enjoying the process and we're enjoying going through the motions every day of making that happen and that's where the you know the fulfillment and the happiness lies it's in the now it's in the moment um and so that realization like actually getting that i think has been incredible incredibly powerful um because if you can realize that wherever you're at right now if you're in a situation where you're not happy in your current reality you know whether that is in an unfulfilling career or job whether that is in a relationship that you're not happy in whether that is you know um even family relationships for example if you're if you're not happy in a current situation and you have an idea of the the, the future that you want to create in that area of, of your life that's great 
but that process of change, that journey of change, like that's where you are in the now, which is the only moment we ever have. And so for me, like being on that journey, that's where I'm always happiest. And so it's about just appreciating the journey instead of always telling ourselves, oh, when I get there, things will be different. It's like, no, 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 it won't. Now things are different if you decide that they're different and you decide that you want to be a different way you want to be happy you want to be fulfilled in the process of what you're doing so yeah that's been i think one of the biggest biggest things from the last couple of years and landmark was part of that mm. well. easier said than done though right <laughs> <laughs> oh I'll just be happy no problem <laughs> <laughs> but so when so what are these other businesses i know i, th I think i know I've seen something around a property thing or something, but what, what are the other businesses that you're doing? Yeah, so at the moment, we've got Scrap the 9 to 5, which is the, the original main company, um, started purely as an affiliate company. Um, now we've got, like, we've got several different affiliate partnerships. We've got our own stuff that we do in Scrap the 9 to 5, and we're really developing out the front end of that with lots of different offers and, and um, uh, key partners to help people scrap their 9 to 5, regardless of who they are, what their strengths are, what path that they want to go down, because we've realized that everybody's different and not one path is going to fit every person. So we're kind of building this, this uh, way for people to identify what is the most effective way for me to scrap my nine to five, replace my income and so on. So that's one. Um, another one which is now starting to pick back up after COVID is Bamboo Bar. Uh, it's an eco-friendly deodorant, um, the bamboo deodorant, there's vegan, it's non-harmful chemicals, all natural deodorant uh, product. And we've got a new supplier for that. Uh, which how, did you, how did you get into that deodorant? So, so that was in, uh, in 2018, actually, during the world travels, I ended up going to Guangzhou in China with Import Experts, which is uh, DEA SFM. And we were, we were doing, it was me and a few people who were part of like a mastermind that I created called Ignite. And we were trying to see if we could build a company by leveraging everyone in the mastermind's individual skills. Cause some people were better at, you know, certain things and other people were better at other things. So we thought, could we bring together a, a team of, of startup entrepreneurs and then from that create a company just in our spare time, you know, it's kind of like a passion project. Um, and Bamboo Bar was the idea that we settled on because we wanted something that was cause driven and that would have a positive impact in the world. Um, so we kind of created this model where we plant trees and it was obviously completely eco friendly and everything as well. Um, and that was the product that we ended up creating. So we got a uh, first thousand units that should hopefully, you know, once we, we, we get them filled, they're in the UK now, but first thousand units should be going on sale quite soon with Bamboo Bar. Um, and then as you pointed out as well, the property side of things. So started uh, property investing and we launched our first YouTube campaigns um, targeting potential vendors who are, are in maybe more difficult situations and want to sell their properties and they can't use estate agents who want to help people, you know, get themselves out of difficult situations. Um, so there's a property brand that we just launched as well to do that. So lots of different things on the go at the moment. Well, in terms of the bamboo deodorant, so I, I only got into natural deodorants probably about, I don't know, uh, 12 months ago or so. So yeah. that, that's, uh, I'll be interested to have a look at that when, when that's gone live. Um, and the property side of it, I know, so what, I know what you're talking about, because that's something I did. I got involved with the Wealth Dragons. I don't know if you know them, John Lee and Vincent Wong. Um, back in 2012 and um, that what you're talking about is what they were um, offering you know promoting yeah and um, it all seemed I thought yeah yeah this is cool this is cool but then I was just like I don't know it just never it just never felt right for me so I'm just interested to know we're probably going a little bit off topic here but in terms of helping distressed buyers uh, sellers sorry and um, people that need to sell the house and, and need to sell probably quite quickly mm. what's your thoughts on it in terms of because is it leasing that you're doing leasehold and um, there's, there's 61 different strategies that the company that i'm partnered with <laughs> will apply to different situations so so it's basically one, one of their key things is it's not about the property it's about the person yeah and it's understanding their situation and then figuring out which 
strategy or which type of deal is going to be the right way for them to solve the problem that they're in you know whether it's like bankruptcy or repossession that's imminent or whether they've had like a you know personal tragedy in the family or something like that and they need to shift the property quickly or you know mortgages expiring and their credit rating has gone through the floor and they're not going to get a renewal on their mortgage or whatever um and so it's about taking that that situation and looking at you know do you structure deals where there's maybe future options um to buy and you're not you're, you're actually doing the deal based on an option instead of doing the deal based on a purchase price now or you know below market value deals which are obviously you know people who need the cash right now that would be a route that they might want to go down so yeah it's about applying these different strategies finding the one that's right for people um in their unique situation and um we, we're doing that through you know our investor network so I would say, Mel, like, because it's funny you mentioned in 2012 you were checking this out as well, because I was about the same time, probably it might have been 2013, um, it's about seven years ago, yeah. and I, I went to a seminar with a company called Tigrant, which is a, a subsidiary of the Rich Dad um, companies, and same kind of thing, I was like, I get it, it makes sense, wasn't really the right time for me, um, didn't end up going down the property path, went down the online business path, but I think it's about... You know, if the intention's right, if you want to help people, you want to make a positive difference, then you can use a skill set, you know, in that way to to help people move forwards. Um, so we'll see. Still very new, still very early days, um, but we'll see how the uh, how the property side pans out. Yeah, interesting because Tigrant used to be before it was Tigrant, it was Russ Whitney. I don't know if you know that. No, I didn't. And and Russ Whitney is how I got into property back in two thousand and three. And they were talking about lease options even then. Yeah. Um, but it, it seemed so American to me back then. You know, it just wasn't really a UK thing at all. And obviously it has become more so over the years. Yeah. So, so it's been on my radar a long time, but I've just, and it seemed, it seemed good. And it seemed like it was a win-win for everybody. But for, for whatever reason, I just never pursued it. So it's in, I'd be interested to, uh, to watch your journey on that one. Yeah, yeah, and I'll keep uh, I'll keep everyone in the community posted with how it goes for sure. Yeah, definitely. So, so what keeps more about you? What drives you, Dan? Because obviously you were doing well in your corporate job. You were in software sales, same as me. Um, you were earning decent money. You wanted more freedom, so you got into the online side. And then you realize that it wasn't all that traveling for 15 months. Yeah, it's all right. It was great. You had a great time, but it wasn't fulfilling you. And now you're branching out into all of these different areas and you've done the self-development. What do you think it is that keeps driving you if there is something driving you? Or what, what, just give us a little bit more insight into Dan the Man, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's such a, an interesting question because, again, I, I, I think just from this conversation, it's probably clear that for me personally, especially in the last couple of years, this has been a real, you know, journey because when I think back to when I first started the first company in 2016, what was driving me and that this this was like the um, the time when I was probably the most inspired and like on fire that I've ever been over the last, um, well, probably throughout my entire life actually and back then it was like the the secret source if you like was I I had somewhere that I really didn't want to be which is the corporate world and I had a sort of dream of the future that I wanted to create and I could see that it was possible from other people in the community and I'd look at them and I'd go right there's there's no reason that they could achieve it and I can't I can see that it's possible it's right there and so that journey ahead of me was a major part of it and the belief that I can do this if yeah. they can do it I can do it and um, also I personally am driven a lot by um, sort of friendly competitions so for example leaderboards and things like that um, I love a leaderboard and that's the more we go inside the you know of, of the drive and the ambition um, and I had an interesting conversation with Justin Wolf who's a, a mentor in our community for anyone who's not sure um, but Justin Wolf was talking to me recently about the difference between commitment and, and devotion. And so I, I feel like the last couple of years, I'm kind of going through a bit of a transition between um, being committed to the things that I'd be committed to, which would typically be more on the, the material side. For example, do the world traveling thing and create a life of freedom, right? And then the devotion side would be more about 
impact and making a difference and you know what is it that I want to leave behind and then actually that is still a commitment because I'm talking about it through the lens of what I want oh I want to help people yeah you could argue it's noble but you could also say well it's just focusing on your own desires but devotion is is more about um it's about the other person it's about you know being aligned with like a cause so a purpose for example um, and John Jackson, who's you know been a, a great mentor in our community as well, his is to serve others with love and respect so that they may flourish. And he's devoted to that purpose statement, and that's how he shows up every single day. And so, to kind of bring it back to your question, Mo, I feel like this the thing that's driving me is is changing at the moment. Like I'm in, I'm, I feel like I'm going into this next chapter where where it's about becoming more aligned to something that's far bigger than me um, compared to what I've been driven by in the past, which is more the commitment to, you know, goals and stuff like that. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I think, I think what you were saying was obviously in the earlier days, it was more egoic driven. You mm. then, you then realized you weren't fulfilled. So then you, you look, you started to look inside because you wanted to feel more and it to mean more. Yeah. Um, and although you've still got the, the businesses that are coming, you know, from that ego and, and from that desire to succeed, you are also now looking more to serve others. Yeah. As opposed to, I want to help people and feel good about it. But what you're saying is, yeah, that is part of it, but it's, it's sort of two steps ahead of that. Kind of, yeah. It's it's like that. I've I've noticed there's an interesting balance between the two because I've I've always over the last four years put a huge emphasis in giving back through learn do teach or it's called learn do share now in our community. Um, but but giving back and helping other people move forward has been a, a major 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 part of my journey and part of my focus. And you know, a, a large part of it is wanting to do good for the other person. A small part of it is I see myself as somebody that wants to help others. And again, you could say that's egoic and it is uh, maybe a, you know, a noble thing to, to aspire to. But at the same time, it's driven by me and me wanting to be a certain way um, and show up a certain way. And so that the balance that I'm really starting to see is I think um, commitment for example, I'm committed to helping people making a difference would be more along the lines of because that's who I see myself as. That's the type of person that I am. And so I want to be that. And that's how I'm you know, going to show up every day. But then devotion from what I'm understanding from Wolf is is more about like there is an ideal or a purpose or something that is just it's it's how you show up and the byproduct of that is for example the value that people receive now i think the balance is drive seems to come more from the commitment and and devotion is just like it's a state of being and it's like you know how you're just showing up every day naturally because that's that's you know what, what you've aligned yourself with um i i think pure devotion without any drive maybe i'm not well i'm not sure because i don't think i'm fully in that space yet but pure devotion without any commitment maybe would be a different type of drive it's just like that's just who you are um but the commitment aspect still gives the more goal focus the ambition side i don't know i think there's a combination of the two of them and i haven't quite figured it out yet but work in progress yeah, yeah, it reminds me actually, because you know, um, so friends of ours, Andy Wilson and uh, Tiffany Lark, they've produced something called the Polaris Game, and the, there's the B, it, there's the do have B, the have do B, or the B do have, mm -hmm. and it, it's similar to what you were just saying. So the the have do be or the do have be is very much action I've, I've got to have this and do this to be this way or i've got to do this to have this and then i'll be happy whereas if you come from a place of being if you if you are happy in your skin if you are happy being and you're being the person so we have like in the game it's called super identity mm -hmm. um, and that's the person that you want to be on a day to, you know like you talked about jj you know, that's what he's living his day-to-day -day life um, by. 
if you are being who you your super identity is every day then like you said the rest just comes as a byproduct of that yeah it's like i mean the be do have or have to be is a, a perfect example of this because in my young years corporate corporate world it was um when i have this then i will and and i'm doing that then i will be happy yeah right? have to be and then um after landmark i was like oh no that's the wrong way around it's it's be do have you know i'm if if i'm being happy i'll be doing this and then i will have that in the future but it's about being first yeah and and i've had this whole internal conflict where i was like well but just the being without you know if i'm discounting the more the material side of things and i'm just like okay well i'm just going to be what I want to focus on is being a certain way or showing up a certain way that was taking away such a major part of what lights me up, which is I like, I love the, you know, the pursuit of things like that's where I'm happiest when I'm striving towards like making something happen and growing and moving forward. So like, I love it. So I think it's an amalgamation of the two. It's like for me personally, if I, when I'm being fulfilled and happy and, and, and that's the space that I'm in every day, a large part of that is that I am what I'm doing is striving towards, you know, a goal that I'm aligned with and I resonate with, and I'm working on something that, you know, lights me up. And I've got like, for example, my sites on a competition of, Oh, I want to, you know, achieve this result or like sales leaderboard would be a great example of that. And that's when I've always felt the best. And so the amalgamation of those two things of, um, be be do have versus have do be um is almost saying okay well for for me to be inspired and be lit up it's when i'm striving towards a have but it's not about the have the realization is the have doesn't matter it's just about the doing that's in that space when i'm striving towards the have so kind of a, a combination if that makes sense yeah okay no that that's really interesting and it's funny how we all evolve you know and it's a constant evolving, isn't it? You know, I think, I mean, I'm older than you and you know what, what probably pisses me off if I'm honest is that, um, you know, I started, you started before me in SFM and I'm just listening to you then, you know, you're driven by leaderboards and the competition and all the rest of it. Even though I've been in sales over 20 years, that kind of stuff never really floated my boat. So yeah. that never really motivated me. And i and when I found SFM, I was like, this is it, you know, this is, this is finally it, because I've done so many different things over the years. And it didn't work. And I have to, and, and then I've, obviously I did the landmark stuff and everything last year, and, and I've done other things. And, and now I'm, I'm, I'm doing my coaching, which is, which is very new and, and is about to launch. And that is something that is purpose driven. That is something that is more devotion than commitment, if you like. Yeah. Um, but there's still that that ego part of me that's like, damn it, you know, when I've seen people like you that have that have done it, you've made it, you made it, you know, whatever that means. Um and I knew I could have done it, you know, and I was I was having some success, but it just wasn't constant enough. And then and then I let it sort of fall by the wayside, although it's not fully gone, but it's you know, I suppose from the listener's perspective because there's people out there that haven't got a clue what they want to do they haven't got a clue they're miserable where they are but they haven't got a goddamn clue what their passion is um what their purpose is whether whether they can even take on something like an online business or or whatever it might be um so what would you because we were both given the same opportunity and you flourished and i had a little bit of success but but then sort of didn't. And obviously that's all down to personality. That's all down to different people. It's all down to different motivations and life circumstances and everything else in the mix. But Mm -hmm. I suppose for somebody that's listening now, that's thinking about maybe making the jump, making a change, whatever it is, what, what do you think you could say to them now that would really sort of help and inspire them and and give them the the belief, actually the self-belief that they can do it? Yeah. Yeah, I think that for for me, um, the thing that made the biggest difference in the early stages is 
I, I made it so that I had no choice to, but to succeed. And it was just a combination of all sorts of things. So firstly, it was, why do I want to do it? Um, and I looked at what will my life look like for the next 20 years if I stay in the corporate path versus what will my life look like if I go down this path? And that for me was like, this is not an option. You know, if I stay in corporate for 20 years and I feel this way for 20 years, no way, like not happening. And there's other people that are doing that. I want to create that. I can do it if they can do it. This is super important to me. Secondly, it was like, okay, if this is that important to me and I'm telling myself that I must do it, then I've got to show up through my actions in line with how important this is. And so, you know, for example, investment is one thing, like the, the amount that I invested in my education and my business is more than I had. Like I got a lo I got a 25 K loan and I used 11 K credit cards plus my savings um, to, to basically put into my business and I quit my job from the word go. Now I'm not suggesting um, that quitting your job from the word go is the smartest way to do things. Not at all it's way better to build a business in the, in your spare time and use the income from your job to help contribute towards your business and pay your bills. Like that makes way more sense. The point is though, that however you do it, if you're telling yourself that it's super important, you have to show up in line with that. You know, if your life was on the line and this was do or die, how far would you go to make this happen? And so that for me, it just, it just put myself in a situation where, I had no choice but to succeed. Like I must, that's it, it's simple as. So it's the why combined with the physical situation. So I, it is scary as hell, you know, when you're in that space and you're deciding, do I really go for this or not? Because we'll get the what ifs, like what if I fail? What if this happens? What if that happens? What if I run out of money? And so I, I think the third thing, and this was a journey, like it didn't happen instantly, but the third thing was just, finding a way to have faith and trust that it's going to be okay because whatever happens right whatever setbacks there are whether you know we do run out of money or this happens or that happens or whatever whatever the setbacks are if we know that we are super committed to making that happen and we're never going to give up no matter what happens we will either succeed or we will die trying that's it right and so if we succeed Will it matter that along the way we ran out of money once and then solved that problem and then eventually succeeded? And the answer is no, it won't matter what happens on the way. And so if you can find the trust and the faith and the belief that you will figure it out and you will get there because other people have and therefore so can you, that then kind of gives you almost this sense of like just, it's, it's surrender, it's acceptance of what is and go whatever happens will happen, but I will be fine anyway. And for me, it was looking back over my entire life for all the challenges that I'd ever faced and realizing that I'd overcome every single one of them because I'd got to where I am today. And for everyone who's listening to this, you are exactly the same because you wouldn't be listening to this if you haven't, right? You're fine. <laughs> it's all worked out. You successfully got here. And so therefore you will successfully get there. And if you can realize that and just go, whatever challenges you face are part of the journey, it kind of gives you this sense of like, all right, I'm focused on going there. I'm going to make it happen. I know it's going to work out right. Let's go. And then you just go and you just do it and you just take action. And you're just in the moment and doing the thing that you need to do to move forwards. Kind of it. Yeah. Um, no, that, I mean, that's brilliant. I, I know that in the, in the past, like before SFM, I wasn't working and how you experienced it was different for me. I got so scared that it was almost debilitating. So I didn't succeed in, in that either. Um, so I, I just wanted to say that because for people, I mean, not that you're advocating that people quit their job and, and go for it, then not, you're not, I know that. Um, but it's also, it can affect people in different ways as well. You know, it, it sort of paralyzed me because it didn't make me very productive because I was constantly worrying about the fact that I didn't have any money coming in. So. Hmm. Um, okay, well, no, that's cool. And, and if you could share one thing not to do if somebody decided to make a change in what, whatever that might be. Well, let's concentrate on the career. We've been talking about yeah, cha yeah. changing careers. Um, something you've learned in the last four years or so, what was, what was the one thing you think, oh my God, if I had my time again? If there is, there might not be. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. So I think if if one one bit of advice that I would I would give is that it's it's simultaneously one of the hardest and probably one of the most straightforward things that we we can do is to we've got to stop listening to the little voice in our heads, right? Because the little voice in our heads, um, it's it's there evolutionarily, it's there to protect us and keep us alive and keep us safe. But unfortunately, keeping us safe means keep us in our current reality, right? our current situation, what we know. And if what we know is working a job that is unfulfilling to us and we're sick and tired of doing it, well, everything in our internal wiring is designed to keep us in that safe reality because that means that we stay alive and in an evolutionary sense, that's what we're evolved to do. We're evolved to keep ourselves alive and safe, not happy. And um, so if the little voice in your head is telling you all the reasons that you can't, all the reasons that you shouldn't, look, one of the most powerful exercises is to have an internal dialogue with yourself and actually question it and prove it wrong. I, I, w I would use logic to, to prove that that was, it just wasn't real. <laughs> like, all the stuff that I was telling myself was not real. And so I would almost say, learn to question everything and learn to trust in the process instead of trusting that that's yapping away in our brain. So <laughs> very, very hard to do in principle. Um, but if you can do that, it's going to make you it's going to give you the ability to move from your current reality into a new reality because until we can make that journey and as long as we're listening to that that's always going to keep pulling us back all the time what we have to do is let that go and get past that and trust that even though that's there we've got to move forward and take action anyway however that looks um, so I would say just have awareness of what that's saying and have the awareness to not just accept everything that it says as fact if you can do that and you can start to question it, it starts to give you the ability to supersede your own programming, which is what you need to do to change your current reality. Brilliant. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and, and finally, just if somebody was to, if you were to advise somebody to take a baby step to, to, to even walk in that direction, if they're, you know, if they're teaching on the edge and they know they want to do something, what could that baby step be? Yeah, I, I would say if if you have, again, it goes back to the why, if you have a reason why there's something that you want to achieve and your why, whatever that is, um, is important enough that you, you need to make it happen. Just taking a baby step is is so, so, so powerful because momentum builds as soon as you start the ball rolling, even if it is just something so small and so simple and so straightforward that it seems insignificant. You just literally go, okay, well, what's one tiny thing that I could do right now that's going to move me closer to that? And then what's the next tiny thing that I could do? And then the next tiny thing, what happens is we start, it's like, you, you know, you've got 10,000 steps in front of you, but fog's covering them all, 10,000 steps up the mountain. You take the first few steps and then the next few steps become clear and then the next few steps and then the next few steps. And so again, realize if you're in a space where um, you're like, I have no idea how to get to where I want to get to, whether that is in getting out your career or whether that is in a new relationship or, or whatever. Like if you don't know the how, that's fine because <laughs> that's part of the process and we don't know the how because if we knew, we'd already be doing it. So if you don't know the how, just ask yourself, okay, well, what's one tiny little thing that I could just start doing that's going to move me closer than where I am now? whether that's go on YouTube and watch a video that's going to teach you something that you don't already know in the area that you want to um, move forward or whether it's just, you know, invest a little bit of money in sort of some education in that area or, or, or a mentor or, or join a webinar or whatever it is, just do something and things will start to open up as you begin that journey. Oh yeah. Brilliant. Well, thank you, Dan. Thank you so much for your time. Cause I know how bloody busy you are. Um, so, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I really do appreciate it. Um, so if people want to reach out um, and find out more about you, obviously there's lots of strings to your bow, but where, where could they come out and find you hanging out and, and talk about your bamboo as well, because I'm interested in that. 
Yeah, sure. So best place to, to look online is just go on my YouTube channel. So just type Dan Holloway or Scrap the 9 to 5 in YouTube. Um, my channel will pop up and I, I kind of put all of the videos that we do regarding what I'm up to at the moment it tends to go on there. Um, we've just published five vlogs of a, a month long UK driving and golf trip that me and my buddy John did in September, which was great fun. Um, so yeah, look on YouTube and then Bamboo Bar uh, website is bamboobar.co. Um, so we're going to be updating and facelifting that website very soon. Um, and then the product's going to be launching soon as well. So yeah, should be able to, uh, to, to find everything regarding Bamboo Bar on there. Brilliant. That's great. Well, thank you again, Dan. You've been an absolute legend as always. <laughs> appreciate you. Thanks for your time. And, and uh, thanks for holding the space for me to talk all about myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Will. Speak soon. Bye.